Right, hello guys. One of my friends has told me that I should be doing talking in my videos and they should be a lot shorter. So, I've got this. This will be something quite easily to restore. I have got no idea what they were using it for because it's on the bottom of a brake disc for some reason and it's some sort of bottle jack that's been tar wrapped in. So this video I'm going to be talking telling people what I'm doing. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this off. I've got my little boy with me, he's going to pass me all the tools because he's learning. Cut that off. This here is called a rod. This is a cylinder. And that will be the oil tank, I would have thought. So we need to get that apart and have a look what, um, what state this rod's in inside. We might be able to reuse it. Right, we'll tap this round. So this is a cylinder, hydraulic pressure pushes on the bottom of that and then pushes that up pretty straightforward and the seals inside a ram, a hydraulic ram, are inside there. So if you look in there, you've got a polyurethane seal which is the first one which is like, um, like a leather, like a leathery plastic, it's a strange feel. And on the other end, this plastic seal is um, just basically for muck. So when people see an hydraulic ram <clears throat> and a bit of this seal stuck out, but it's not leaking, it's because that actually doesn't hold any pressure. The only one that holds pressure is the one inside there. On a big ram, you'd have four or five seals in there. So this is the rod. And what we're looking for in there is any pitting, so any dints out of the um, chrome, if it's chrome, this one isn't, but there's no marks in that whatsoever, it's smooth, so that'll be fine to reuse, so we'll reuse that. Okay, so take this off, well done, you can see there, the seal's gone on that, it's leaking, but that's basically where your oil sits inside the side of this cylinder. Right, we will drain the oil out of this, into there. You can tell it's had an oil leak because there's not a lot of oil in it. Okay. Inside the bottom of there, there's a gauze which stops any um, rubbish getting into the oil, into the pump at the bottom, because this pump will have a small a small seal on it. Like the oil's like glue. And it shouldn't be like that. Inside there, there you go, little seal, little rubber seal there. Also inside there there'll be a small ball bearing, hopefully. There it is. And that is what, when you screw the pin in, stops the oil being able to come back, so it holds the jack up. So there's the gauze. That stops any rubbish getting back into the tank, because that, basically the base is the tank, what holds the oil to give that a clean up. This is the fill hole on the side. We've taken that out, clean that up, make it look shiny. Okay, so this is the pin. It's got a little bit of uh, rough edge there, and that rough edge actually holds it in on the old stuff before they started making stuff cheap. That's how they did. And there is the retainer that holds it in. Surprise there's no seal on that. And there you go. Simple as that. Right, so now I'm gonna put some thinners in there because it's full of oil. So thinners is the best thing to get oil off. If you sandblast with um, something oily, or oh, it's had oil in it, it makes the glass stick together. So it won't work, so let's get that in there. We'll give that a clean. These are all the parts cleaned up. So now I'm going to give them a quick polish on the polisher. These are obviously we're going to paint, but these things they want um, to up. 
so they've got a bit of shine to them. I've took all the gaskets off these, we'll replace them. The gasket off the middle there, we'll replace that. And it'll be good as new. Just been thinking, this is the cap, the end cap. Instead of painting it, I might polish it. There's a, a few blemishes there, but I could file them out. Because I'm going to polish it, I'm going to spray paint that black. Just the letters, so you can see them a bit better once I've polished them. Just using cheap paint. So, give it a minute. Just wipe the top and then just wipe the top off. Looks pretty good. Just give that two minutes, I'll put another coat on. Right, okay, everything is ready for paint. So, I'm going to prime everything quickly. This basically sticks to metal. Better than just normal paint. To be honest with you, normal paint is as good. I'm not lying. I've painted a lot of stuff without any primer at all. And to be honest with you, it's, there's not a lot of difference. But here we go. On your finger. Yeah, one big, one big dirty run in it and you've got to start again. So if I can give anybody any advice, just the thinnest coat, put the thinnest coat you dare, and that is literally all you need. Don't need to be drenched with primer, just a thin, damp coat. Now you can see they're all sat drying and you need the secret weapon. Are you ready to see the secret weapon? It is the Hello Kitty hair dryer. This is how I dry it in between coats. Right, two or three minutes later after using my secret weapon, ready for some colour. And a metallic blue. This pain pops. You ready? <whistles> Remember, thin coats. That's it. If you look, there's loads missed. Don't worry. Don't worry. When you're going round holes, make sure you don't over paint it. The same thing applies, you can just you can put as many coats as you want. It really does not matter. And it's so tempting just to put an heavy coat on in one go. Believe me, I have messed up more stuff than I've got right with too much paint. Put it back on there. Secret weapon. Right, final coat. Oh, sprayed my finger, standard. And if you look, just the tiniest bit of paint just fills all the moles you missed the first time and it's just, it's like glass. Right, okay, another five minutes has passed with the air dryer. And basically now we need some clear coat. What that does is fills all the holes on the rough surface, basically gives it a shine. You're just filling holes up with it, that's what the thing is, but watch the difference. 
Look, it's like a sheet of glass. I prefer to do clear cut with just one thin cut. I don't start blasting loads of coats on it because it just doesn't need it. Just one half wet coat and that's enough. So basically this is it for 24 hours inside the heater. Couple of boards just to keep the air moving into the middle. And that's it. Quite warm in there. Dry everything off. And tomorrow we'll put it back together. Okay, so the paint's been drying on this for 24 hours. So now it's just give it a clean up. We're just trying to remove the old paint and any pit marks. And that is what you're left with after about five, ten minutes of polishing. No need to do underneath because that's hidden anyway. Let's start rebuilding it. This is the tube. That screws back in there. Then the mesh to catch any rubbish. That goes in there. Now some instant gasket. Slide that back onto the housing. Then the rod, a bit of a thread lock. Just stops the threads being able to come and done. Also, acts as a sealer on your thread. Screw that on. Tighten it up. Slide that back in. Top gasket. Bit of oil on the inside of that thread. Oil, believe it or not, is actually a good sealant. That's why when you put oil filters back onto cars, you always give them a bit of oil around the top of the filter. Make sure everything's lined up before you tighten that down. So I've got all new, new gaskets. So the first one is for this little bolt. The plunger for the base, obviously we'll lubricate that again. That's that in there. Okay, so now we've put our plunger in, which is what jacks it up and down, creates hydraulic pressure. Remember, this had some spindles on the end of it. Place that back into the hole. And then it will sit there. Just give that a, a gentle tap. Don't need to go crazy with that. And there you go. And that's your pump. Here's our old box of, box of O-rings. I like to keep these and it's just basically a case of looking for one that's about the right size. Great little tools these. Little hooks. There you go, perfect. Same as last time. Bit of oil. Put the ball bearing back in. And this is what you'll undo to let the jack down. So when you want to let the jack down, you just undo that screw. And the ball bearing pushes backwards. The only thing missing from this 
is a nice handle. So we need to make one. I do have a piece of brass bar which is not a million miles off the size of that. Hmm. Right, so I think we'll have a go using this to make an handle out of. Right, so this is my mini lathe. It's only small, give you an idea. But it does the stuff that you can't do without, really. So we'll have a go. Right, so this is what we're left with. A rough face, you've probably seen that on anything that you don't want to slip out your hand. Looks quite nice, I'll give it a clean up. Now we've squared that off, we'll turn it down to 20mm so it fits in the handle. Right, okay, so this is what we've got. We've turned it down, this is what we've got. Just going to shine it up, a bit of sandpaper. That, that is looking nice. So now I just need to take this out, spin it round, just give this end a little shine up and that should fit in quite nice. I've, I've sloped it down a bit, tapered it down, just so I didn't have to take as much meat off and then just obviously give it a polish up. Okay, so now we will uh, glue the pin in. Right, so here it is, the finished article. I think the handle looks good, I'm going to keep this, I'll put it on the mantelpiece. I prefer to make things that, when they're finished, they don't really get used, if you know what I mean. I don't like restoring new anything new, I prefer to do old stuff. She's looking well, let's make sure she goes up. And I made that so that'll... And then that will fit in there. Turn that. Down it goes. Right, just remember guys, I did this video because my friend said that he thinks it'd be better if I was talking and telling people how I'm doing stuff and things like that, so basically they can all learn. Oh, well, I don't even know if they need to learn, but just, just to keep everybody interested. So if you want to let me know what you think in the comments down below, or if it's on Facebook, leave me a comment on my Facebook page and what you think of the job. But yeah, she's turned out uh, pretty decent. Good old English engineering at its finest.